Political correctness has just gotten so freaking out of hand. And the oversensitivity toward uh, dear ruler is just... Uh, I, I, I warned you about this crap, though. I did. I warned you. What did I say, Puck? Five years ago, what did I say? If you elect Barack Obama president of the United States, what's going to happen with race relations? going to set us back 50 freaking years. And I was right. I was right. It's not that America is a more racist nation. It's just that, yes, it appears to me that damn near any criticism of Barack Obama, if it's done by the right people, generally is considered to be something racist. While nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing. I mean, uh, you could you could have um, Oliver Stone criticize the president. You're not going to hear any. Hey, he's a snake. But you're not going to hear anyone say anything bad about Oliver Stone. But let one rodeo clown at an obscure little rodeo at the Missouri State Fair do a sketch that has been done with every president of the United States since I can remember in a rodeo, that I've been going to rodeos, and all hell breaks loose. I don't know about you, but did they tell you about our famous helper we're going to have out here tonight? No, they did not. You ain't saying anything about it? Who is it? It's Obama! Hey, let me tell these people about who we got help, and Obama's going to have to just stay there. Obama, watch out for those bulls. Gentlemen, let's meet our cowboy protection specialist. We got two of the best in the business. How about it for Lil D, Derek Scourge? <laughs> On the other side, JD Spider Jones, Paris, Missouri. Oh, yeah, and uh, the man of the clown dominium. The clown, the funny man, the jokester. Duffy Gasoline, ladies and gentlemen. And don't forget Obama. And don't forget Obama. He's out there, too. Tuffy Gasoline joins us right now on the Jazz McKay Show. Tuffy, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to talk to you, man. Uh <laughs> What do you think? I honestly, this show. What do you think of all of this? Uh, all of this uh, attention that was thrust upon you as a result of this little, little escapade two weeks ago. Um, and to be honest, it's uh, it's overwhelming. <laughs> to be honest, did you? Uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this kind of tradition at re- at rodeos where they poke fun at whoever the president is, whether it's Barack Obama or George W. Bush? Well, I think uh, maybe not. I mean, just just to, it's a satire comedy. It, it was right. just something to be a funny, funny ha ha. As you as you just heard on the clip, you know, uh, the gentleman was saying the jokester, the funny man, yeah. the this, and then next thing you know, uh, you know, it's <laughs> one little. And what people don't see is is what you don't hear is the entire skit through the entire thing. Is you're just people are just hearing bits and pieces of it, and uh, and. I can see if you take bits and pieces out of the entirety how it could be misconstrued as something wrong. Well, obviously, I, I, I just I watched as much of this as I could. I mean, I searched out as many different uh, versions on YouTube of it. Any, some of them as short as you know, 30, 40 seconds. Some of them as long as three minutes or four minutes. And I, I yet to find, I've yet to find anything that seems remotely offensive that should be offensive what? to anybody. Well, I never meant it to be offensive. I meant it to be poking fun at the exactly. at the uh, at the thing. Well, I mean, who was back who? in the, the Depression days? I mean, they used to poke fun at at, at those elected officials. Exactly, um, and, and I you know, fe- we poked fun at Reagan, going, uh, "I don't remember, I don't remember." <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it goes on and on and on. Uh, you know, they used to poke fun at uh, George Bush. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we used to stand out in the arena and go, "Duh,", Duh. and he goes, "What are you doing?" <laughs> My, my George Bush impression. Uh, <laughs> now, I tell mean, me, were you wearing the mask? Or, or okay, tell me the story. I, I, okay, you you literally and the folks listening to you right now, I am going to tell you the exact deal. I was not wearing the mask. I was not wearing the mask. The bull did not run the bull run Obama over or anything. 
remotely like what's been put out in the press or, or out on the Internet or anything else. The Bulls never even um, never even got close. I mean, the, the, the job that I have, I have to know what Bulls going to do what, mm-hmm. why it's going to do that, if they're mean, if they're hooky, if they're going to, you know, they're going to go after the rider, if they're not. The other two bullfighters out there, they have to know the same thing uh, to kind of do – a uh, little bit of comedy and keep everybody safe, and so nobody gets hurt. That right, kind of thing. Right. So the Bulls never within weren't within forty feet of the Obama dummy, and he was a dummy, and it was not a dummy. Okay. Uh, the whole skit is: you tell a couple of uh, jokes, a funny ha ha's. That's all they were, and then uh, you know if a bull gets too close within fifteen, twenty feet, thirty feet, whatever it is. Uh, you know, where you feel that uh, you're able to give the cue and the dummy, per se, or the person that's inside the dummy wearing the mask and everything else, turns around and runs off. Becomes to life. See, the whole gist of it, folks, is that they they, they want you as as an audience member to believe this is a dummy that they put out there. Right, because we use those. In our, in your in our app, in, attempts to distract bulls from riders or distract bulls from uh, not going a certain direction, right? You know, as a um, almost as a uh, perceived fence that say, "Oh, there's somebody there that go the other way," and uh, that's that's the whole deal. I mean, and when the dummy comes alive, you know, people they pay for a whole seat at a rodeo, but you want them to only sit on the edge of it the entire night. Right? Exactly. exactly. They want. I mean, it's just. It's just like a NASCAR race. Now, people don't go to see an 80-point bull ride because they do it every day, day in and day out. That's boring as all get out. I don't know, I don't know how many of your listeners have been to a rodeo. That's boring. Yeah, it is. To watch an 80-point bull ride, another 80-point bull ride, another 80-point bull ride, and, and pretty soon you're asleep. Um, they want to see a wreck. I mean, people do. That's why they turn on NASCAR. They don't want to see a car go left-hand turns uh, for three hours. They want to see a wreck. They want to be – and if there is going to – you know – they don't wish there's a wreck, but if there's going to be a wreck, they don't want to miss it. Absolutely, this is this is this is the appeal, and that's that's what yeah. you're trying to give them here. Exactly, and you know, and when uh, the the you know, and I was, I remember, it was just a it was just a funny ha ha, and next thing you know, some gentleman uh, decided that uh, it ought to be you know put out there. I think there was one comment that. Uh, it reminded him of being at a KKK meeting, oh, for, oh. Is, is what I read. Well, I don't know about you or anyone else, but my personal life, I've never been to a KKK meeting. <laughs> neither, neither have I. I don't know what they're like. And if they're like a, a, a championship finals rodeo, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Tuffy Gessling with Maybe us. I better become a chicken Maybe, farmer or yeah. something. I mean, <laughs> right. Uh, the uh, Tuffy is uh, the, uh, the 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 rodeo clown, they, but you weren't the clown in the in the mask, though. Uh, no, no, I was the gentleman. If you all watch on the video, I'm the gentleman in the uh, very traditional and very antique and, and an older generation clown that I had the opportunity to mentor underneath. Right. He'd give me those baggies, those what they're called, the pants that I wear are called baggies. They're called Lee Rider baggies, and uh, I have those from him. Uh, in fact, the the whole dummy idea of the dummy coming to life, the whole thing, that was his. He he literally, you know, many years ago, before he has uh, unfortunately passed away from this great earth of ours, that uh, he he told me, he said, use this. He, this will help you in times of, uh, you know, your crowd being lulled to sleep. <laughs> 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 I mean... I mean, it's, and, that, and that's all it was. So, and you're out you know? there, you're mic'd up, and you're talking to the announcer. Right, and I'm the gentleman in the white shirt standing right. on the white and blue barrel right there in front of Obama. And, in, uh, in front of, and it's not Obama. Uh, let me correct myself. No, it's, it's not Obama. It is a gentleman dressed up in a likeness of Obama. An Obama mask? Yeah. And, uh, you can buy at any you, Walmart anywhere, or any costume shop anywhere in the country. Yeah, anywhere you want. Now, so you're the one talking to the announcer. The announcer and you both are bantering back and forth. Never heard anything offensive there again, but no. some, somebody thought there was and blew this thing out of proportion. And Correct. then what happened with the Missouri State Fair? Um, as of right now, um, there has never been a Missouri State Fair official contact me at all. Mm, okay. Um, the, the, the 
the stuff that I have, I mean, they've never contacted me by phone, letter, email, nothing, uh, text message, uh, Facebook, Snap Time, whatever you want to call it. Nobody, nobody's ever contacted me at all. Um, they sent out a press release, from what I understand, and the only re- place I've read it is on Facebook that I was banned from performing again ever for a lifetime at the Missouri State Fair. And they've never contacted you. That you just you got that off of the internet. Nobody said anything of, to you. Yeah. <laughs> now what about what about the the announcer? Uh, now this is what, what, it, well, this is a circuit. I mean, do, doesn't this rodeo yeah. travel? And uh, I mean, this isn't a, yeah. a performing at the Missouri State Fair, but the travel. Uh, how about the the organizers of of the of the rodeo? What have they? Um, what has been their reaction to the, you? Uh, the reaction to the association. Um, from what I understand, and that's from reading on the Internet again, uh, they have stood behind me. Uh, they have said that, you know, hey, we're not going to ban him. We're not going to take his, his right away to, to make a living or to uh, entertain uh, because, you know, and they have stayed behind me. Uh, the announcer himself, uh, from what I understand, I wasn't at a meeting and I and I and that, but I understood that he stepped down as the president of the association. That's what I now, heard. Now this yeah. event that that was at the state fair is the state finals, the Missouri state finals. That means the best of the best in the state of Missouri get to compete and show off what they can do in a rodeo venue. Uh, so I mean, this was basically an you know, and I treat I treated it like an honor every time I've gotten to go. I've gotten to go previously, you know, pretty the little that I have. <laughs> gotten to go four times mm. and had the honor of being voted clown of the year so uh no. in that in that aspect yeah Do, are you so, are you still going to rodeo are you still going to clown um yes i i am still going to clown i i i mean uh i'm not going to let you know just because i said something that was uh what i said you took as offense it's not my fault <laughs> I mean, no, I, I really, listen. I've been doing this. You know, I talk like this on the radio for thirty-five years, and I've often said the exact same thing. I've said that, hey, look, uh, you know, just because you were offended by something I said, it doesn't necessarily reflect on me. It might reflect on you. Exactly. It might reflect. Let me ask uh, you this: Now, the NAACP <laughs> talk about an irrelevant uh, organization. The NAACP has asked the Secret Service to investigate. Has the Secret Service or the FBI, has any of those guys contacted you? Um, nobody has contacted me. Um, I have had um, some phone calls. Now, I don't know who they're from. And, you know, and if they're listening, <laughs> please don't call back. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, they, did, they have uh, made inquiries and... Uh, and uh, observations that go on throughout my life on a day-to-day basis and, uh, and kind of made people a little bit nervous, um, as in, you know, they're kind of telling me where I'm at, what I'm doing, what I'm wearing at the particular time I'm on the phone with them. Uh, that, and then the conclusions at the end of that uh, phone call were not very nice. Um, wow. You, and you have no idea who these people are that are calling you? No, no, no. Uh, one was, uh, you know, there's been several. I mean, there's, uh, there's been five to be exact. Um, and then my, uh, my dad has said that he has, uh, there's been a couple of cars come up in the driveway that he, we don't know who they are and, uh, and blacked out windows and, and that kind of thing. But I, as of me seeing them, no, he's just told me that he's seen them. They come in here and turn around and leave. So I don't know if they are per se fans or per se something else or but as of the circuit service contacted me no they have not contacted me no, they have not no direct anything. contact hi this is the secret service and we just you know they did this to ted nugent somebody you know ted nugent uh, did something on stage said something that was that offended some people so ted nugent ends up getting um getting a visit from the the secret service they come to his door and they say look we know this there's nothing to this but we have to come by and talk to you you know so nothing well, like that's happened at all no no but, nothing and nobody has knocked on my door um i have had uh but you're getting no, calls, no and that that that, yeah. that that bothers me that you're getting that you're getting harassing phone calls uh, from people, and they're describing. They say, "Hey, I see you, Tuffy. I see what you're wearing. You're wearing a, a blue t-shirt and blue jeans, and exactly. uh, 
Wow, man, yeah. that's that's freaky. And there was uh, and there was one <laughs> little incident that uh, I got spit in the face. That was kind of, uh, and I got called a uh, son of a, and then mm-hmm. I got spit in my face, and they walked off. And then this was somebody and a total stranger. You didn't know who this was. Total stranger. Yes, I didn't know this lady wow. from nowhere, and uh, she didn't. I mean, I guess she recognized me from the internet. I'm assuming. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I didn't know who she was and, and, you know, that's kind of degrading because I mean, yeah, it is. what people are seeing on the internet is just, you know, snippets of, of well, what they, the they're not, they're not seeing anything. Was. There's nothing there. My point is that, you know, every, like I said earlier, every time I've seen this, there's nothing there to be, let me ask you this. Was this the first time that you had used an Obama mask? in one of these rodeo events. I mean, five years the man's been president. Have you used the Obama mask before? I have used the Obama mask uh, on other occasions, you know, and, and have said Obama jokes and, I, and said, you know, uh, you know, different things, uh, you know, but it's, I mean, and it's crazy. I mean, it literally is yeah, crazy. It is. When did you realize that this was being blown up? How did you find out about it? Um, I got a phone call. Um, well, one time, uh, well, right after the finals, uh, we have an award ceremony, mm-hmm. and we all shake hands and get our buckles and our and our packets and things like that as the honor goes with being, you know, voted clown of the year and all that stuff. Um, we did that, and I walked out, and I had spoken with a gentleman earlier, and he shook my hand. He said, you know, hey, uh, we won't be doing any of that stuff at any of, of the rodeos that we do. We're not going to do that, that, that. I said, that's fine. I mean, you know. It was never discussed ahead of time. There was no, uh, you know, pre-game meeting at the finals that said, "Hey, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this." Um, it's all off the cuff. Literally, it's all off the cuff uh, because if you script anything, ninety-nine uh, percent of the time you're dealing with animals at, uh, in the rodeo, and the scripts don't ever go with what the animals are doing. And I was going to say, the bulls don't follow the script, do they? <laughs> No, no. I mean, there's only two things that a bull that you know what's going to happen to a, bull, to a bull. I mean, a lot of these guys say that they can read these bulls and everything else. There's only one thing when them bulls come out of the arena: they either want to hook you, or they don't hook you. And that's the only they'll live it. I mean, they either want to run you down, or they don't. And they don't always telegraph what their intentions are. I would imagine. Unfortunately, no. Their their publicists <laughs> don't really give us a script and say, "Hey, he's going to do this tonight," and you know, no. Tuffy Gessling, ladies and gentlemen, the rodeo clown. Now, this is uh, your. The, is, is this your first interview since all of this? You are literally. I um, uh, I have a gentleman that's acting, and and I guess your station or somebody contacted him. He said, uh, but yes, this is the. Uh, I did talk to a newspaper gentleman, mm-hmm. um, which uh, he was he was very nice uh, in that deal. And then you are the very first radio, TV, anything interview. And we look forward to maybe doing some more and kind of explain. I would love to. I would love you know, to have kind of you get it out there and explain what was going on and and things like that and and let people know that I'm I still going to clown. Should. I think you I'm should. not backing down. I'm no, holding don't. my head up high. My chest is puffed out, and I'm still going to say what I want to say because it's still the First Amendment. Damn right. Don't 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 take any of this crap that these people are dishing out to you. But be careful well, because, with those people well, that are you know calling you. And I just I'm just you know. That, right. It worries me because uh, uh, before I let you go, uh, let, I, I got to ask you about Congressman St- Stockman. Are you going to take him up on his offer and go? Uh, I, I, I tell you what, I haven't told anyone, but I tell you what, I'll let you in on the scoop. If I'm able to go down there to Congressman Stockman and hang out and uh, be at, at any venue that he wants me to be at, you're dang right, I'm going. <laughs> I think, we dang should, right. I think we should have you out here to uh, the Kern County Fair when we have our rodeo, too. Let's see if we can get uh, maybe I get... I tell you what, anybody that at literally uh, that wants me to come, all they have to do is uh, get in touch with your station. Yep. You, your, your folks have, have, have my number um, and that, and uh, there will be... I mean, they can contact us on Facebook um, and that deal also. But uh, anybody who wants us to come, I, I tell you what, it's an honor. It really is an honor. I've been told several times that I have become the most famous rodeo clown by a gamut of people like you would not believe from every I genre. Think you have. 
of the world <laughs> from think you are. movie stars, recording artists, to uh, blue collar people, to people that don't even have a collar. Um, <laughs> That's uh, most of my listeners. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, to, to be real honest with you, anybody that wants me to come to entertain, uh, because that's what I live for. I mean, I literally live to make people laugh. Uh, that is, uh, I think that's my purpose on this world. Um, I don't think I'm a political martyr. I don't think any of this stuff that some of these people are saying that I'm the most genius man in the world to use this kind of comedy in a rodeo arena. <laughs> Evidently, that person didn't turn on Jay Leno or Conan <laughs> O'Brien or any of those guys <laughs> those there. Are, right, exactly. But exactly. uh, anybody wants me to come, I guarantee you. Well, we'll do that. I'm we'll, able to work it out. I'm ready to go. We'll do it, man. We'll help you out in any way we can. Tuffy Gessling, ladies Appreciate and gentlemen. You. Tuffy Gessling. Hang on a second because Puck wants to talk to you. Uh, just uh, stay right there, Tuffy. Tuffy Gessling, the rodeo clown, the most famous rodeo clown, first radio or broadcast interview of any kind right here on 1560 AM and 90. What a delightful human being. And what a patriot. God bless you, Tuffy. We'll be right back with more of the show. 1560 AM, 97.7 FM, KNZR. Chaz McKay on 1560 AM and 97.7 FM, KNZR.